My husband and I were looking for woodland over 10 years ago to manage sustainably and work. It was quite a lot of land uh, with not a lot of woodland, though the woodland that is here is, is really beautiful and had been neglected, needed to be managed. The rest of the land was all pasture fields and had had cattle on for about 40 years, so it wasn't in a very good um, state. However, the land is situated between two small roads, it's like a corridor, um, and either side of those ro uh, roads are large woodlands. So we thought, why don't we plant more trees? And if we plant them on this strip of land, then we're going to join up the two areas of woodland and um, create more of a wildlife corridor. This area is one of the areas of new woodland that we planted about 10 years ago. All the new woodland was a mixture of native species, but I, I think predominantly oak with birch. Having said that, since we originally planted, I have actually been dotting other trees around because I think it's really important with climate change, we don't know how English native species are going to react. So it's good to have a real mixture of different species of trees in order to create hopefully greater resilience to that. And it's good for wildlife as well. So the trees take a long time to establish here. The soil is quite acid and compacted and very stony. I think it's taken a long time for them to get going compared to other people I know that have planted trees, say, in their garden and they've just shot up. But this is a very different kind of situation. Personally, when I'm here all the time, I don't notice that speed. I think they're, they've been quite slow. Um, but when people come, especially the children, and I ask, how old do you think these trees are? And they're really surprised that it's only 10 years. A tree can get that big in 10 years. So the trees were not planted as closely as a lot of new woodlands. Some woodland owners tend to plant very densely and then when the trees grow up, they thin them out. So we did it the other way around, planted less densely and um, last winter, the community came in and um, did more planting, well, interplanting amongst the existing trees, partly to increase the carbon capture of, uh, of this land, essentially. This field has been planted with very different species. Most of the woodland that we've been walking through has been hardwood species. So this field has been planted with different varieties of conifers, with birch and rowan. Softwood is a very useful wood as a timber. In fact, probably most of the timber that's used in housing and general joinery is softwood. So it's one reason for growing these trees is for future generations, whoever ends up looking after this land by the time they're big enough to actually fell, which hopefully will be a long time yet. But it also creates a different habitat for wildlife. And we've seen different bird species in here that um, don't live in the native woodland. So apart from the well-known benefits that, that trees provide or, or products, a lot of the reason that people plant woodlands or forests to extract timber, uh, to make firewood, charcoal, um, etc. There are a lot of other things that um, trees produce, the major ones being uh, the carbon capture and increasing soil as well, which are desperately needed. There are other products that come directly from the trees without really doing very much to them, like leaves that will make leaf mould, etc. Different kinds of trees that I've planted here that produce edibles, fruits, nuts, medicines, saps and fibres, uh, more akin with what people used to harvest in this country hundreds of years ago, a lot of which has been forgotten about. 
but which other indigenous peoples all over the world still uh, grow and harvest.